In our previous video, we mastered the art of creating and manipulating shapes and lines by resizing and rotating them. We will continue the same progress, and in this tutorial, we'll show you how to add colors to fills and strokes to objects and text in Adobe InDesign. Welcome back to another YouLearn video. You'll learn a few different ways to customize your colors, from using the color picker window to the swatches flyout menu. Plus, we'll walk you through the process of adjusting stroke thickness and style to make your design stand out. Get ready to take your InDesign skills to the next level and make your design shine. When working on objects or text frames, you can change the stroke color, which is the outline, or the fill color, which is the color that fills the object or text frame. All right, to tweak the look of a design element, there are two key things we gotta do. First, we gotta make sure that the fill thumbnail is in the front so we know it's active. If the stroke thumbnail is in the front, then any color we choose will only apply to the stroke. But if we wanna change the fill, we gotta make sure the fill thumbnail is front and center. And then we can go ahead and pick the color we want. The only thing you need to do is click on either the fill or stroke to have the active element of color. You can change these colors in a few different ways, but make sure the object you want to color is selected. By selecting the color icons in the control panel, click on the arrow to open the color swatches or double click them to open the color picker window. You can either select a color from the color spectrum or enter a specific color value in the RGB or HSB fields. Once you have chosen your desired color, click OK to apply it to your selected object. By selecting the color icons in the toolbar, double click them to open the color picker window. You can either select a color from the color spectrum or enter a specific color value in the RGB or HSB fields. Once you have chosen your desired color, click OK to apply it to your selected object. By using the Swatches Flyout menu, which you can access by going to the Windows tab, scroll to Color, and select Swatch It. In the Swatches panel, scroll through the available swatch until you find the color you want to use. Click on the swatch to apply the color to your selected object. That's it. The color from the swatch you selected should now be applied to your object. If you don't see the color you want in the Swatches panel, you can create a new swatch by clicking on the New Swatch icon at the bottom of the panel and selecting your desired color. By using the color panel menu, which you can access by going to the Windows tab, scroll to color, and select color again. In the color panel, you will see several color modes to choose from, such as CMYK, RGB, Lab, and even more. Choose the color mode that you want to work with by clicking on its tab at the top of the panel. To pick a color, click and drag the cursor around in the large color field to choose the hue and saturation. Then adjust the brightness or opacity by moving the colors below. Once you have chosen your desired color, click on the OK button to apply it to your selected object. That's it. Objects should now be filled or outlined in the color you selected from the color panel. You can add a gradient fill or stroke by selecting the object and then double click on the gradient icon in the toolbar. Or go to the Windows tab, scroll to Color, and select Gradient. In the Gradient panel, you can choose from several types of gradients, such as linear or radial. Choose the type of gradient you want to use. Then click on one of the color stops in the gradient slider to select it. Click on the color swap in the color stop to open the color picker. Use the color picker to select the color you want for that stop in the gradient. Once you have chosen your color, click OK to apply it to the selected stop. You can repeat this process for each color stop in the gradient slider to create the desired color blend. You can also adjust the position and opacity of each color stop to the fine tune to your gradient. That's it. Your object should now have a gradient applied to it with the colors you selected in the gradient panel. From there, you can choose a preset gradient or create your custom gradient. After applying colors to the objects, you can adjust the transparency of a fill or stroke by using the transparency control in the control panel or the effects panel. This allows you to create semi transparent or translucent effects. In the process of adding color to your text, it is crucial to exercise care when altering the fill color of the text. This requires selecting the text specifically with a text tool as opposed to the text box. Failing to do this may result in the coloration of the text box instead. In the event of an unintended color fill, one may utilize the undo command by pressing Command Z on a Mac or Control Z on a PC. To highlight the desired portion of text, one may double click on a specific word 
triple click to select the entire sentence or to utilize the text tool to manually select the intended words. To change the stroke color, make sure the stroke thumbnail is active front and center and select your color. The stroke thumbnail should be the front color now. You can customize the weight and style of the stroke in the toolbar or the stroke flyout menu, which you can access by going to the Windows tab and scroll down to stroke. And if you want to switch it up, such as your stroke and fill colors, just click on the curved arrow in the swatches panel or in the toolbar. Pretty easy, right? Okay, so if you're trying to make your lines thicker or thinner in your design, here's what you gotta do. First, click on the thing you want to change. Once you find it, you'll see that you can change the stroke thickness in two different spots. You can either mess around with the stroke weight and style at the top of the control panel, or you can check out the stroke flyout menu for even more options. If you can't find the panel, just go to the Windows tab and click on Stroke. With these options, you can customize your lines and stroke however you want, whether it's a straight line, shape, or text. If you enjoyed this video and want to stay updated on the next one, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. We'll notify you as soon as it's ready. Thanks for tuning in.